Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So on today's video, I want to discuss and recommend the best Switch games for adults. So I know a lot of people think that Nintendo is all about kids and you know, family friendly games. But nah, the Nintendo Switch is pretty much for everyone of all ages. And I'm going to highlight on this video um, games. I'm going to recommend these games to anyone that's looking for adult oriented games, you know, um, the best ones at least that I think you should all play, you know, mature titles, mature games. And, and some of these are going to be ports as well. So, you know, you may have played them in PS3, PS2, whatever, you know, the Switch does have a hell of a lot of ports as well. But um, yeah, let's just get straight to it, man. This is my recommended adult games on the Nintendo Switch that you should all play. So to start off this list, it's Metal Gear Solid The Master Collection. Now this got released last year, you know, 2023. Um, Metal Gear Solid, you know, there's three games on here. You got Metal Gear Solid 1, Metal Gear Solid 2, and Metal Gear Solid 3. Plus you got the old the NES originals for any of those retro gamers out there who like, you know, grew up with the originals. But yeah, it's pretty much the first three Metal Gear Solid games. And um, yeah, it's um, for me personally, the first one will always be my favorite. Uh, I don't know, it might just be nostalgia, I don't know what it is, but number one is always the best for me. I even love the Twin Snakes in the GameCube, but unfortunately that's not on the, veil, on, um, the Nintendo Switch yet. Yet. Hopefully it'll come out one day. But um, yeah, uh, Metal Gear Solid Collection, you know what, it's awesome. It's the game that started off the stealth action genre. And um, yeah, uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 uh, and 2. Uh, 2 is okay, I recently completed it and I've started playing through number 3. Uh, I've obviously done it back in the days, but I'm playing through it again. And so far, you know what? It's not failed. It still holds up. This game, this trilogy is awesome. Metal Gear 2, yeah, I don't like Raiden. You know, he's a bit whiny, but hey, it's still worth playing. It's an awesome game. It's got a great story, but it's all about number one and number three. Uh, so yeah, the Master Collection. Check it out, guys. Next up, we've got Astral Chain. Now, this one's an exclusive uh, for Nintendo Switch. It's actually owned by Nintendo, the IP that is. And it's developed by Platinum Games, the guys who made Bayonetta and Metal Gear Rising and Neo Automata, all are awesome action games. But for me personally, Astral Chains is arguably their best game. It, it is so underrated. Like, if I did an underrated um, ranking video, I would put Astral Chain in there as probably in the top three. Um, but yeah, Astral Chain is absolutely brilliant. For me, it's Platinum Games' best game. And uh, yeah, it's an awesome game. It's uh, worth checking out. It's um, two, two. It's like two genres in one. If you like L.A. Noir, you know the detective side of things. It's you know it's got a lot of that in this. Except it's you know set in a cyberpunk world, futuristic, and um, yeah. So there's this like detective element of the game where it slows the pace of the game, but then you know when the action kicks in, you oof, it's just something else. If you like your anime, you like your Devil May Cries. You, you know, you got to check this one out. It is awesome. It is fantastic. And yeah, so Astral Chain. Next up, um, the Doom Collection or the Doom series. Uh, I think all the Dooms are, are available on the Switch now. You got the original Doom games from the 90s and then even the Doom 64. Um, and then you've got the more re newer releases, Doom it's 2016 and Doom Eternal. Uh, me personally, these are not my kind of games, you know, I do like my FPS, but the Doom series, I'm not a big fan of them, I don't mind them, uh, but I know they're a big, big deal, a lot of people like them, and you know what, I have played the ports, and they are very good ports, I'm just not a big fan of the Doom series, uh, but I like the original when it first came out in 1993, you know, the very original, um, but the 2016 one, I, I get why people like it, I'm just not, you know, a big, big, big fan of the series, but it's definitely on this list because this list is for top adult games that I would recommend for anyone that's looking for a mature games. And Doom is definitely up there. It's a very good port of the, you know, Doom Eternal and Doom 2016. So uh, yeah, I would recommend Doom. Project Zero, Made in the Dark Water and Project Zero, Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, I think. I think that's what it's called. Anyway, you got the two Project Zero games on the Switch and um, you know, if you like your survival horrors, this one's definitely worth checking out, especially if you like that Japanese grudge type, you know, the rings, you know, that, that sort of horror. It's definitely worth, you know, checking this one out. Um, 
yeah, it's very mature. It's very creepy. It's not one I would play at night on my own, you know. I ain't gonna lie. It is a creepy game, you know. It's probably the closest thing we got to Silent Hill. So, yeah, check that one out, guys. If you like taking pictures and of ghosts and you're not scared. Or if you do like getting scared, definitely worth checking this one out. It's one of the, it's up there. Uh, it's, it's, cre it's scary. It is scary. I don't like it because it's scary. Uh, the Diablo collection. So you got Diablo 2 and Diablo 3. And if you like your co-op, um, you know, co-op games and you like your... I don't know what the genre is, you know, the Diablo type of games. I wouldn't even put it down as an RPG. I'm not sure what the actual genre is. Regardless, you know what I mean. If you like your co-op games, four-player co-op, you just smash them up. Definitely check out Diablo. Um, it's actually a very good port. I play it. It's good. Um, so that's worth checking out, guys, if you like Diablo. Next up, we got Paranorma Sight. Um, I think this one's uh, worth checking out if you like your graphic novel type games. Now, I do like my graphic novel type games, you know, that genre like Phoenix Wright, where you're just reading, reading, and just, you know, click, 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 that sort of game. I, I would recommend this one. Is I've, I've not completed it, but I've started it, and I'll tell you what, it is a creepy game. Very creepy. So it's a graphic novel survival horror, kind of. Um, and it's definitely worth checking out if you like that genre, if you like the graphic novels and you like your horror. This is easily up there as probably the best one that I can think of that's horror. Um, it's definitely worth checking out. If you like Phoenix Wright, you like um, uh, Famicom Detective, uh, them sort of games, well this is up there. It's not got any voice acting, that's all I'm going to say. That's the only negative. Um, it could have done with some voice acting, even, yeah. But, still worth checking out guys. Um, yeah. Next up, we got 13 Sentinels. Now, this one is actually one of my favorites. I've not completed it, because I've got a backlog of so many games to go through, but 13 Sentinels is awesome. If you like Godzilla, and you like story narrative driven games uh, with a nice artwork, um, I don't know, just check this one out. It's, it's, it's also got some good strategic combat in there as well. But it's very story driven and character driven. And you know what? It's a very interesting game. Uh, the concept is obviously like, you know, you got these kaiju type monsters attacking everybody. and But then it's not even about the monsters and all that. It's more about the characters. You got these 13 sentinels or characters. And they've got their own story. And, you know, you get to know their back backdrops, backstory, whatever and just see how they all progress and they all come together. I haven't completed it, so I can't do a review on this, you know. I'm just recommending the adult games that, you know, you guys should check out. And uh, yeah, I totally recommend that one. The In Sentinel. Next up, we got the Bayonetta trilogy. So you got Bayonetta 1, Bayonetta 2, and Bayonetta 3, which took, oh, mate, five years to complete. But I still haven't completed it. I've started it. It is a good game. I've completed Bayonetta 1, Bayonetta 2, but Bayonetta 3, I'm still midway through it. It is a good game though. Very smooth combat. Very, very, very smooth. The combat is just fantastic. Um, the game is mega over the top as you'd expect. And uh, it's fun. Cool character, Bayonetta and all this weird stuff going on. It is awesome. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, Bayonetta 3 uh, and Bayonetta 1 and 2. They, they definitely hold up. Number 1 is still up there, you know, for me. Probably my favourite still. But yeah, guys, if you like it, yeah, again, your Devil May Cries and stuff like that, Hack and Slash, this is it, Bayonetta. Check it out. Next up, we got Neon White. Now, if you like your speedrun games, like the more recently Nintendo World Champion, which is purely a speedrun game, you need to check out Neon White. This game is awesome, and it's so underrated. Just went off the radar when it came out in 2022, and uh, it's an indie game. And it's so unique, it's very different. It's not your typical FPS, I can tell you that. Controls are very, well, the controls are FPS, but like it's it's different. Like you don't even shoot anything. There's, I mean, you do shoot, but you don't like shoot enemies. It's, it's a strange game, it's a speedrun game. You just gotta get to the end of the stage, the goal, and that's it, complete. But it's how you do it. It's very clever, very clever, like so unique, the controls and the design, the gameplay, it is, is awesome. It is really addictive. And um, it's also got a story there too, but not really uh, into the story, if I'm honest with you. But it's definitely worth checking out. It's actually a pretty cheap game as well. You know, it's an indie game, and when it goes on sale, I recommend you pick it up. Uh, yeah, that's uh, Neon White. The Resident Evil series. So, 
I'm not going to list all of them, but you got the whole Resident Evil series here, like Resident Evil 0, Resident Evil 1, 2, 3... I think there were some of them are cloud games as well, like the remakes. Uh, you, you even got some Resident Evil 8, but I wouldn't recommend the cloud games. Stay away from those, they're just not worth playing. Um, but yeah, you got the Resident Evil, the original right, Res 4. Uh, yeah, the Res series, most of them run there. Like, you got the Revelation games as well. So, Resident Evil, it's awesome. You know, it's one of the early mature titles on the PS1, you know, the, the series when it first started. Um, but yeah, they're all on the Switch. A lot of them are just ports from the old GameCube as well. But yeah, it's definitely worth mentioning. And if you like your old games, you know, Res 5 is nice co-op as well. Yeah, totally recommend Resident Evil series, guys. Check it out. Next up, we got Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, there's also Monster Hunter Ult Ultimate. Is it Ultimate? Yeah, I think it's Ultimate, but we can ignore that one. I would recommend Monster Hunter Rise as it's the most recent one. And you got Monster Hunter Wilds coming out next year. So if you want to prep for that, you can start off playing Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, Monster Hunter is all about online co-op with friends and just beating up monsters and dinosaurs and all that stuff and it's it's probably for me the best uh, co-op online game with friends. I totally recommend it. I love Monster Hunter Rise. For me personally, I think it was my game of the year for 2021. So yeah, totally check out Monster Hunter Rise guys if you've never played it. And then there's your usual Atlas games such as uh, Persona, the Persona games. Uh, you got Persona 3, Persona 4 and Persona 5. These games are absolute classics, totally recommend them. They are very mature um, JRPGs with some very dark themes. Um, and I would probably say it's rated 15 onwards, I think. Uh, either way, it's definitely worth checking out. They're very mature adult um, RPGs. But they're awesome. They're some of the greatest games of all time, especially Persona 4 and 5. And um, yeah, and then speaking of Atlas, we've also got the Shin Megami series. Now, I just want to say with Shin Megami, they are very mature. I think it's even rated R or 18 in, you know, the, in the UK. Um, but the, the um, what's it called? Uh, Shin Megami games. One other thing I want to add is I found them very blasphemous. So if you're a religious person, I wouldn't recommend it. Stay away. You know, it's, um, it's a bit deep. But if you're not a religious person, then I don't know. It is a very mature 18 rated game and very dark. It's the complete opposite of Persona 4, let's just say, because Persona 4 is very light hide. I would recommend the Persona games over Shin Megami, but it depends what you're after. If you're after your very mature R-rated violent games, well, you got Shin Megami Tensai 5. Just ignore the uh, the religious side of things because it is very blasphemous. So if you're, in, if you're a religious person, I would stay away from Shin Megami, and I would get Persona instead. And that's it for me on this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, let me know in the comment section if you found this video useful. Um, let me know if you're what you think of the Nintendo Switch, do you think it needs more mature titles? Um, but yeah, let me know in the comment section guys. Thanks for watching, I might do another video like this in the future. Thanks for watching.